Hello everyone and welcome to the Everbloom Gold Challenge Mode Guide. My name is Baby Jace and I am the Blood Death Knight in this group. This is probably the hardest challenge mode gold to get in the, out of all 8, just simply because the timer is so strict. You're going to want to pull these first 3 packs down the hill to uh, this pack and you're just going to you're gonna tank all of them and just AoE them all together. Uh, to get mob count, you also are going to need to pull the patrol that our hunter just pulled right there that's coming in, as well as the next pack. As you can see, the naturalist also running in now. You need the naturalist for mob count, so you're going to want to just tank them all together and just AoE them down. Uh, they do charge and like blade storm, you can't really do much about that. And uh, some do cast like dancing thorns and stuff. You just kick whatever you can kick. Um, this pack is, it's pretty, it's decently easy, like maybe it's kind of, maybe it's a little hard at first, but uh, you'll get it. It's not that, not that hard once you kind of figure out what you need to do. But uh, anyways, once this pack is defeated, you're going to get on your mount, and you're going to jump up the cliff right there, as you can see our guy on the mammoth. We're, we're jumping straight up into like the skull slash blue area, and you're going to want to just jump on top of the hill and get on someone's mammoth. You're going to want to have mammoths and yaks for this, simply because not everyone's going to be able to do it. Like, I simply cannot jump up that hill because I, I apparently suck at the game, I don't know. But not everyone can jump up the hill, so you just want whoever can get up on the hill to be on a mammoth or to get on a mammoth, just so you can easily get up there. Now for these pulls, um, you're going to want to pull the first two packs and the patrol together if the patrol is there. If the patrol is not there and it's by the third pack, you're just going to go ahead and leave them alone. But uh, you want everyone kicking the menders. You do not want them to get their heals off. Uh, you're also going to want to use a lot of AoE stuns here simply because um, they the menders will stun people after they use their mending ability and that really can't have too much of a DPS loss here because your tank can't last forever on this pole. But once you do kill all the menders, you can go ahead and pull the last pack of menders and just group up the menders and the naturalists just kill those three as well, kicking the heal whenever he does cast it. Eventually you will kill these two mobs and break combat. Now the boss will enter combat before he actually becomes attackable. Pay attention to the water orb. That is when he'll, when the water orb touches him, he'll enter combat. Um, so if you wanted to pre-pot here, I guess that's what you're going to wait for. We chose not to pre-pot simply because we want to save it for his brittle bark phase and we were just going to blow everything there. So you're just going to want to drag the boss back and use a small cooldown for uh, Parched Gasp. Uh, it does do a lot of damage, so I, I AMS the first one and Rune Tap the second one, uh, just to save our healer some mana. While he's doing this, he's going to be throwing uh, patches of roots out onto your range. You're gonna wanna position these all around behind the boss, so that when the water droplets are coming towards him, they run into the roots and turn into a plant instead of giving him energy. Once this phase does start, you're going to want to hit your potion, uh, lust, all your cooldowns, and you're just going to go ham on the boss. Just completely nuke the boss, do as much damage as you can. Um, it's okay if a water orb touches him, it's not the end of the world, he needs four of them to touch him, so you can let three touch him, no problem. And you definitely want them to go into the pathway of the roots so that they turn into an ad instead of reaching him. So keep positioning the roots in the way of water, uh, water orbs. At a, at a certain point, you're just going to ignore all the water orbs coming in and just nuke him down. Once he is dead, you're going to go back the way you came, except you are not going to go down the hill that you jumped up. You're going to have a hunter or one of your players jump onto the cliff right here and uh, jump up. Now, if someone jumps up and someone doesn't, you can just get on your mammoth and again, mount up on them and just continue on up the hill. You are doing this to avoid a lot of the hard trash of this instance, and you, and you need to do anything you can to save time. Try not to run over the green circles like I did, because that'll put you to sleep. And you're just going to jump right off the cliff and go straight to the second boss and pull it. Now, for this boss, you need to uh, interrupt 
only the heal, and you need a player with a, um, a, a purge of some sort ready to go on Life Ward and Gola, because you are only interrupting his heal, you are not interrupting his other two casts. Revitalizing Waters is the only thing you're going to interrupt. The reason being is once you do interrupt Rising Waters, he becomes immune to all CC and all interrupts. So you're definitely going to want to um, just interrupt the, the waters, the heal. Um, no, on this boss, you don't actually have to interrupt. See, I accidentally interrupted Rapid Tide, and he got his heal off. So you don't want to do that. You need to just interrupt the heal, not Rapid Tide. Um, you can interrupt him with stuns. They are actually immune. Uh, they're not immune to stuns. You can stun them. So using stuns as an interrupt is perfectly viable. Once you do kill uh, the healer, um, you're going to want to go to Earthshaper Telu and tank uh, Dulu on top of Telu and just cleave them down. The only thing you really want to interrupt on Telu is the Bramble Patch. You don't really want Bramble Patch to be going everywhere, as uh, that's pretty bad. Uh, from what I was, I'm apparently being told that you can actually, if you're Death Knight, grip Telu on top of the healer and cleave all three of them down. Now, I don't know if you actually can do this. Uh, I haven't gone back to try, but if you can do it, that's actually very huge, and you're going to want to do that if you have a Death Knight. Once the healer is dead, the last two die pretty fast, so you can just go ahead and cleave them down. It's not really a, a big deal. They, they die pretty fast. They don't really do much. Just run away from his noxious eruption as that does knock you back and deal a pretty decent amount of damage. Once you've killed this boss, you're going to go ahead and mount up and head straight to the spider boss. One of your ranged, however, is going to go towards the mage boss, and they're going to aggro one to three mages, uh, the trash that is padding around the mage boss. You're going to want to pull one to three of those mages and then head straight to the spider boss. The reason being is the gauntlet to summon the spider boss is a gigantic waste of time. And you want to... and there's, there is a lot of mages near that, uh, that mage boss. So you want to, you want to, you know, even them out. So you just, you want to pull some of them with this and, uh, it makes it a lot easier to deal with once you do go to pull the fourth boss. Unfortunately, our gauntlet reset, so we had to wait for the eggs to spawn. But once you get down into this cavern, you're just going to want to hit the eggs right off the bat. So that you can start the third, bo uh, third boss as soon as possible. The mage eventually will come. Here it is. Here's the arcane mage, and here comes the frost mage. I'm going to attempt to grip it in in 10 seconds. Or I'm going to AoE grip here. So you, you just want to... It's okay if you only get two. Uh, you just you want to aim for one to three, not really more than three. The thing with this trash is there's one melee spider, one spider that casts on people, and one spider that just fixates on a person and runs towards them. The most important one here is the fixating one. If the fixating one reaches the person, it'll blow up and deal a lot of damage, possibly killing one or two people. So you definitely need to make sure that it does not actually reach the person and blow up. So you definitely want to kill that. Uh, once you do kill the mages, they will respawn as a spore. They won't use their special abilities, they'll just uh, use their regular abilities. On the topic of the mages, um, the arcane mage will summon a black hole. That will just like suck you in. It does no damage, so don't worry about that. The frost mage will summon a bunch of frost patches on the ground that will erupt and freeze you if you get hit. And the fire mage will cast uh, dragon's breath, which will disorient all your melee. The dragon's breath is absolutely the most important thing you kick if you do get a fire mage. Um, you must kick the Dragon's Breath, and you must kill that Fire Mage as soon as you possibly can, just because it is the one that will cause you to wipe. The other ones won't really cause you to wipe, but the Fire Mage definitely will. Eventually, the Spider Boss will come down from her web, and you'll just DPS her. Try to interrupt as many of her uh, Venomous Stings as you can. You can let the other cast go off, you just want to interrupt the Venomous Sting. Now, we're not really sure what happened, on this boss, something bugged, and she's not summoning any of the pale ads. But um, we don't. This is not probably. You can't probably replicate this. So 
when adds do come in, you just want to dot them up and just still keep DPSing the boss, cleaving off the boss onto it, because eventually the boss will jump onto the Pale Orc and consume it. So, when it does consume, uh, start casting Consume on the Orc, you're just going to want to swap to the Pale Orc and nuke it down so that the boss doesn't heal. The heal is pretty significant, and it extends how long this fight's going to last for, so you definitely don't want to ever let her get the heal off. Other than that, this boss is a pretty easy boss, so I can't see you having too many problems with it. So once you kill it, you're just going to go up the hill and uh, make your way to the mage boss. I, I believe the trash around the mage boss is probably the hardest trash in this instance, simply because there is all of them are casters, and it's very hard to tank a bunch of casters together in melee without having a Gorfiend's Grasp. Uh, luckily, I'm a DK, so I, I do have Gorfiend's Grasp, but if you're not, if you don't have a Death Knight, it's, it just, this pull is a lot harder than it needs to be. You just go ahead and group up all of the mages together, so we're actually about to get five mages, seven mages together, which is really bad. At this point, I would army. You're definitely gonna wanna army if you get a ton of mages together. Um, so army, AoE grip them together, just uh, AoE stun them. You just wanna just chain AoE stun them, and again, have one melee, or one, your tank interrupting one dragon's breath, and having another range interrupting the other dragon's breath off of the other future pyromancer. You cannot let, um, Dragon's Breath go off, like, it, it just does way too much damage. Right, the Dragon's Breath itself doesn't do damage, but it'll cause your tank to take way too much damage. Halfway through this trash, you're gonna notice that the boss becomes uh, aggroable, and that's because the mages around the boss, once you kill those, they allow the boss to be pulled, but the mages that are, are trash, that are padding, those don't have anything to do with the boss, and so if you kill the ones around the boss first, if you happen to kill them in the AoE, the boss will pull. Um, she's a pretty simple boss. The main difference between Heroic and Challenge Mode is you never want her to go into Arcane Phase. Her Arcane Phase will probably wipe you pretty fast. And the way to prevent her from going into that phase is you're going to let her get off the first two Parasitic Growth Casts. You do not want to interrupt the first two Parasitic Growth Casts. You're going to let her complete the cast, and eventually on the third Parasitic Growth, that is when you're going to interrupt it to push her into the Frost Phase. Um, so once once uh, she goes into the frost phase, uh, frost phase, it's exactly like it is on heroic. She'll put blizzards out. She'll cast frost bolt. You just and uh, she'll summon the spore image of the fire. Just keep nuking her. Keep jumping over the uh, fire petals. We tanked her more up the road, away from all the fire blooms, just to make it easier for us to to DPS her down. In this phase, you never want to kick Parasitic Growth unless you have to. Now you should only have to kick it is if your DPS is really low and you risk her just raping your tank via Frostbolt casting. You, know, you, you don't want her to kill your tank with a ton of Frostbolt cast. Um, so if you have to, kick it to put it into the Arcane Phase, but you must kill her uh, extremely fast in this Arcane Phase because her Arcane Blast will kill you uh, very fast. Once she's dead, you need to pull the two mages that are left. There's one mage near the tent and one mage that just kind of pats around. You need to pull both of these and kill these for a mob count because uh, obviously if you don't have mob count, you won't get uh, a gold on this uh, dungeon. You'll have to go back and find a mob and that's usually very hard to do. Um, usually killing the last boss without mob count will wipe you. Once you kill a mage and it summons its spore image, ignore the spore image. It doesn't give mob count. Just completely ignore it. Once you kill both mages, you are going to ignore both of the spore images that they spawn and just go straight into the portal. Note, however, once you enter the portal, you will start the last boss. There is no, like, you don't, you can't pull it when you want. The second you enter it, the boss is going to move upwards and it will pull. So you're going to want to lust on this boss. Use all your DPS cooldowns, pots, everything you can on this boss to uh, kill it. Uh, note, this boss is exactly like it is on uh, Heroic. Once you see a fire patch on the ground, you want to tank him in the fire patch. Uh, whenever he does use entanglement on an ad, you want to break entanglement off of everything. The adds do a lot of damage for you on this boss. They do a lot of the patches on the fire, uh, the patches on the ground that are fire, they do a lot for you. 
So you definitely want to break them out of entanglement, and you obviously want to break out your party members from entanglement. Uh, eventually he'll cast Genesis and summon a bunch of flowers. You need to run over as many of these flowers as you possibly can. They do a lot of damage on challenge mode, and you only want one to two of them really getting off. If you have a hunter, you can fox here, and uh, fox will make all your casters able to continue casting while you're running over the flowers. Um, throughout the fight, he periodically summons adds. It's up to your tank to pick them up. Uh, make sure you're focusing on that. Don't really focus too much on the flowers on the ground. Just focus on picking up aggro, and let your DPS uh, and your healer worry about the flowers on the ground. Uh, other than that, just keep moving him into the fire patches that are on the ground, and he will eventually die. He's not a very hard boss, honestly. Just keep breaking entanglement off of adds, keep breaking entanglement off of party members, keep running over the flowers, and just keep aggro on all the adds that he summons. Uh, note, however, that if your tank is becoming overwhelmed by the adds, you're probably going to have to start AoEing them, or throughout the fight, you can just AoE cleave them down, and that'll help tremendously on this fight. Uh, with keeping your tank alive, because uh, I think right around here I start taking a lot of damage from all the little adds, from the flowers, from the big tree dude. Uh, it's just, it's turning into a lot of damage, so you just, you definitely want to just cleave them all down. Eventually the boss will die and hopefully this will give you your gold medal. If you don't get it on your first try, don't be discouraged. Again, this is the hardest challenge mode to get gold on, simply because the timer is so tight. I wouldn't be surprised if they increase the timer in the future with a balance change, but uh, if they don't, it's alright, it is still possible to get gold. Um, if you enjoyed the guide, go ahead and subscribe. Leave a comment if you uh, have any comments to say, if you enjoyed it, say you enjoyed it, if you have a suggestion. Maybe I missed something, maybe there's a better way to do something, and I can include that uh, in a future guide, or I can include it in this guide. Um, you, as you see in front of you, here's all the rest of the challenge mode guides. Go ahead and just click on any one of them to bring you to those, and uh, have a good day.